So good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, today's session is a very important uh, lecture on the next wave of anti-obesity drugs. And this is lecture number 93 of my Mastering Diabetes and Endocrinology lecture series. In this particular lecture, we are going to look at everything what we need to know about the next generation of weight loss drugs. So let's start right away. So these are the latest drugs which are currently in phase three and near to approval. Uh, number one is Rita Tutride. Second is Cagrisima. We'll be looking uh, into the detail of each and every uh, of these drugs and the data available so far with these drugs in the subsequent slides. The third in line is Orphor Glyporin. Uh, fourth is Servodutide. And third is Mass Dutide. We'll be looking at the mechanism of action of each one of them and their uh, mode of administration in the subsequent slides. So first, to understand uh, what is the role of GLP-1 agonist. So the ones which we are already using is semaglutide, liraglutide, and tirzepatide, which is a combination of GLP-1 and GIP-1 agonist. So how does GLP-1 agonist benefit for obesity? It decreases the appetite, so basically acts on the GLP-1 receptors in the hypothalamus, reduces hunger, increases satiety, so it slows down the gastric emptying and leads to early fullness, reduces the cravings, especially for high-calorie foods via the reward pathways, and improves glycemic control. Of course, our patients are benefiting in type 2 diabetic patients. So increases insulin and decreases glucagon. So that's how the GLP-1 agonist work. Second in line is how does GIP-1 or GIP agonist work? Uh, so basically, we know there is a peptide, which is a dual GLP-1 and GIP agonist. So how does a GIP agonist work? Uh, it modulates insulin secretion. So in a glucose dependent manner and thereby enhancing the metabolic efficiency. So it also enhances GLP-1 effects, hence it is synergistic when co-administered as, as a dual agent, like for example, tirzepatide. Uh, what about uh, action in the CNS? The GIP receptors in the hypothalamus uh, may reduce appetite and improve leptin sensitivity. Also, it has anti-inflammatory effects in adipose tissue. Alone, GIP agonists have modest effect, but in combination, uh, with a GIP agonist like in terzepatite, it enhances satiety and metabolic benefits, possibly via increased energy expenditure and improved insulin signal. So we can see the advantage of having a dual GLP-1 and GIP agonist in terzepatite and how we have been using it in our clinical practice with great benefits. Now, what is a glucagon agonist? I'm talking about this particular because uh, this thing in particular, because this is the uh, in the new inclusions for the next wave of anti-obesity agents. This will be available as in the form of retartutide. Then we have servodutide, which is again, we are talking about GLP-1 plus glucagon dual and triple agonist. How this uh, glucagon agonist work in the obesity, it increases the energy expenditure. So basically, glucagon stimulates the thermogenesis and lipolysis, decreases the food intake by having an anorectic effect, promotes weight loss without compensatory metabolic slowing, increases hepatic fatty acid oxidation. Uh, caution as it may raise glucose levels, but this is offset when we are using uh, uh, I mean, when you're using it alongside the GLP-1 activity in a dual or triple agonist, and in dual or triple agonist, glucagon enhances fat loss and metabolic rate, thereby complementing the appetite suppression from the GLP-1. So that's why these three now mechanisms are of prime importance in uh, introducing to us the next wave of anti-obesity agents. Now, the fourth is the mechanism by which it is uh, also helpful in obesity is usage of amyline analogues. This, for example, is the cagrilin tide. Now, amyline is nothing but a 37 amino acid peptide 
co-secreted with insulin by pancreatic beta cells in response to meals. It plays a key role in postprandial glucose regulation and appetite control. So again, acts on an area posterna and hypothalamus, thereby decreasing the appetite, slows gastric emptying like GLP-1, reduces the meal size and frequency. It complements the GLP-1 and they work on different satiety pathways and therefore have an additive effect. So the combination which will be uh, the, the molecule which will be available will be Cagrisima, which will have Cagrilintide plus semaglutide. So Cagrilintide amplifies satiety and fullness, whereas semaglutide reduces appetite and delays gastric emptying. So together in the form of Cagrisima, will, uh, in the studies have found up to having a 23% reduction in the body weight, almost approaching bariatric surgery outcomes. So this is the fourth in terms of the drug class which will be helpful in the next wave of anti-obesity medications. So as I mentioned, first the GLP-1 agonist, GIP agonist, glucagon agonist, and amylin analogs. So this is a summary of whatever we discussed in the previous slides. So let's start now with ritatotride. So the mechanism of ritatotride is it is a triple agonist. So it is a GLP-1 agonist plus a GIP agonist, plus glucagon agonist. We already looked at how individually these three mechanisms work and when we are using them as a combination, it is synergistic. And it is uh, from the company Eli Lilly. It will be in the form of a weekly injectable and efficacy is up to almost 24.2% weight loss at 48 weeks in the studies. Phase 2 trial showed 83% of the patients on 12 mg achieved more than or equal to 15% weight loss. And currently it is in Phase 3. So this was a key clinical trial uh, surrounding ritatotide in the patients with obesity. It was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. It was published in NEGM in July 2023. Uh, it involved around 338 adults who had a BMI of more than or equal to 30 or BMI of more than or equal to 27 with greater than or equal to one comorbidity. All of them did not have diabetes. Mean BMI was around 37 and the follow-up period of 48 weeks. So participants received data to try it at the following weekly doses, 1 mg, 4 mg, 8 mg, 12 mg versus the placebo. So what is the placebo? Clearly, we can see the percentage change in the body weight from the baseline at week 48 was significant as the dose was from 1 to 4 to 8 to 12. And for 12 mg dose, we had almost up to 24.2% weight loss from the baseline over a period of 48 weeks versus the placebo. Currently, this is the best in the class amongst the currently under investigation agents. So clearly, the primary endpoint was met and uh, it came out with flying colors. What about the safety and tolerability? Most common adverse events, of course, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, GI related. Um, uh, discontinuation rate was very low. Mostly it was during the dose escalation. Other observations was there was increased heart rate observed early. This peaked at 28 weeks and later stabilized and declined. So there was totally it was totally fine after the first initial uh, period and no major, major safety signals were reported. In terms of the other exploratory outcomes, we had great improvement seen in the blood pressure and the lipids in the uh, exploratory outcomes and also there was a reduction in the HOMA IR thereby uh, suggesting that it improves insulin sensitivity. Lean mass loss was not yet reported but expected to be preserved better than with pure caloric restriction. Next, we mentioned already about Cagrisima which will be a combination of semaglutide and cagrilintide. Cagrilintide is nothing but an amylin analog. We already looked at how amylin works in the obesity mechanism. So basically, it's a combination of GLP-1 plus amylin analog. No Nordisk is the one manufacturing it. It is again going to be available as a weekly in injectable injection. Efficacy-wise, in the trials, redefine 1 and redefine 2, Redefined one showed it to have 22.7% weight loss. And in type 2 diabetic patients in redefined 2 trial, it is found to have 15.7% weight loss in type 2 diabetic patients as well. It is currently at stage phase 3. 
and regulatory filing is expected in 2026. So that's second in line, Cagrisima, combo drug, semaglutide plus Cagrilintide. Let's move on to the next one, which is amicretin. This is a unimolecular GLP-1 plus again an amylin receptor agonist. So again, dual. Again, the company is no Nordisk. So it will be available in the form of oral as well as subcutaneous. It will. It is uh, in phase 1b and 2a trials. It has caused up to 27, 22% weight loss in around 36 weeks follow-up period. An early phase study showed it a do strong dose-dependent weight loss with a very uh, good safety profile. It's currently in the early phase 2. Next in line is Orpho Gliprone, which is a very uh, uh, much going to be in the talk soon because it's an oral small molecule GLP-1 receptor agonist. Uh, Li Lilly is manufacturing it. It's going to be a daily oral pill. It is uh, found to have around 14.7% weight loss at 36 weeks in the trials. And NEGM published the phase 2 trial and the, uh, the medication had a strong tolerability and efficacy in a pill format and it's currently in phase 3 for the studies. The next in line is servodutide. It has a mechanism of GLP-1 agonist plus glucagon. So it's again agonist. So it's again a dual agonist. Uh, Boringer uh, Ingelheim is uh, the one manufacturing it. It is again uh, going to be available in the form of a weekly injection. Approximately around 19% weight loss was found at around 48 weeks follow-up period. 67% of the subjects on 4.8 mg of servodutide achieved more than or equal to 15% weight loss and up to 40% achieved more than or equal to 20% weight loss compared to the placebo. So status is currently it is in phase 2 and phase 2 has just been completed. Then next in line is um, from Viking Therapeutics. It is uh, labeled as VK2735. Again, it's going to be a dual agonist. So GLP-1 and GIP-1 agonist, something like tirzepatide. It's going to be available again in weekly subcutaneous and they're also working in the oral formulation for the same. 14.7% uh, efficacy in 13 weeks. 6.8% uh, weight loss for the oral in 28 days was reported in the trials. So the studies which are going on is the Venture Phase 2 and the Oral Pilot Study. And so far, it has found to have a favorable GI tolerability. It's currently preparing to go into Phase 3. The next in line is Maritetide, which is a GLP-1 agonist plus GIP antagonist. So it's a peptide antibody conjugate. Uh, the manufacturing company is Amgen, 20% weight loss with the potential to reach 30%. Phase 2 has showed sustained efficacy and strong cardiometabolic benefits and it's currently uh, going into uh, Phase 3 for the same. Then we have CT388 which is a dual GLP-1 and GIP agonist, minimal B beta arrestin recruitment in this regards, uh, it is manufactured by the company Roche. Um, it is a, going to be a weekly injectable. Again, it's a dual GLP-1 and GIP agonist. Uh, in around 24 weeks, 18.8% uh, uh, weight loss versus the placebo was seen. Uh, phase 1B met all primary endpoints with strong tolerability and it is now transiting into phase 3. Now, let's moving on to the next uh, drug, which is Pemvidutide, this is going to be a GLP-1 plus glucagon dual receptor agonist. Uh, the company is Altimune. It is going to be a weekly injection. So 15.6% weight loss from the baseline has been seen with the 2.4 mg dose with strong liver fat and lipid reduction as well. The studies involving it is momentum phase 2, is preserved lean mass and had a favorable cardiometabolic profile as well and is preventing to, uh, and is preparing to go into phase three for the studies. Let's move on to the next one, a slide which helps us see the comparative overview of retartrotide, Cagrisima, uh, Orphor, Gliporon, and Servodutide, and Masdutide. So this is a quick overview about the current stage of the drugs and the percentage of weight loss found in the studies 
and the mode of administration. Some more uh, novel anti-obesity drugs, some novel mechanisms which are planned for the future are the one coming from Versanis or Eli Lilly company. This will be in the form of Bima, Grumab. This, will be, this is an activin receptor blocker that increases the lean mass while reducing fat. So approximately 20% fat loss was found in the study so far with muscle gain in phase two. And we are expecting a potential combo therapy uh, by 2027. Some other novel mechanisms and administration forms is uh, Biva Melagon, which is an oral MC4 receptor agonist targeting hypothalamic obesity. In other drugs, it is Immuna, which is a secretome-based therapy for sarcopenic obesity, aiming to reduce fat while preserving muscles. Uh, another one in line is APHD012, which is an oral mimetic of gastric bypass metabolic effects. Uh, and phase two data is expected soon. Last in line is S3093, uh, which is an oral MGA2 inhibitor targeting lipid metabolism. And again, we're expecting some more results come in the coming years. So these are some other novel mechanisms which are currently under investigational phase. Uh, to help us in our uh, fight against obesity. So this is a summary for all the mechanism factions, uh, as I already mentioned for retratotide, cagrisema, or for glyperon, servodotide, masdotide, maritatide, and we looked at also the other investigational agents out here as well. And this is the expected timeline for the novel anti-obesity agents. So. Why this all matters to us is uh, very soon we are going to have an oral GLP-1 like uh, or for glypron as well and uh, mass ducide. This may hit as early as 2026-2027 and this may improve access for the patients who are afraid of needles. Uh, triple and dual agonist, we already looked at uh, how well uh, Tilzapatide has been working as a dual agonist, but imagine a triple agonist, retartotide, then cagrisema, servodotide. This can achieve almost up to 25% weight loss. This can even rival bariatric surgeries. Then we are looking at agents like bimagrumab and immuna, which could avoid the lean mass loss, which has been seen with powerful fat loss A drugs. And preservation of muscle will be another interesting aspect of these novel anti-obesity uh, mechanisms. Last but not least, some drugs targeting MC4, MGA82, or acting via the metabolic surgery mimicry offers paths even beyond gut hormone agonist, which we are currently aware of. And that's the end of my session today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.